Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for another Sponsored Products Masterclass here. We're going to be discussing product launches today. Uh, we have a couple of people in the room here with us. Our speakers today, um, my name is Gary Eingar, I'm the Manager of Product Education, and we're lucky to be joined by Alistair McLean Foreman, our CEO. Hello everybody, thank you very, very much for uh, joining us today. We're going to have a, a great discussion on a very important topic for Amazon sellers, um, really how to launch a product. And we also have Megan Cleason. If you've been to a product, sponsored products masterclass before, she'll be very familiar to you. Hey, everyone. Happy to be back on the masterclasses. Awesome. So we have a great agenda for us today. Uh, we're going to go through um, sort of setting a baseline for how advertising can impact your business, um, not just your ad business, but your overall business, what sort of timeline to look for a product launch in particular, and then you know how you determine when the product is done launching. Um, and we're going to discuss a little bit um, at the end marketing off of Amazon and other channels you can leverage for your business. Awesome. So I just want to kick off the webinar with uh, a poll here. Just curious for all of you attendees, have you attended a master class um, of ours before? Yeah, we'd be curious to know. It'll help us um, set sort of a baseline for knowledge. Um, but at any time, if there's anything we're talking about that's unclear to you, please keep the questions coming. Um, we have our team of experts monitoring questions, and we're trying to answer some of them live as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so uh, just on that note, please feel free to use the chat box to write in. Um, as, as Gary said, we have a team uh, monitoring the chat and would like this to be interactive. So feel free to nudge us with any questions, interact with us, and um, you know we're going to be reading through all the comments and questions through the GoToWebinar control panel. So thanks a lot for already we can see some people writing in so i really appreciate that all right so i'm going to go ahead and close that poll thank you for everyone participating there and just to share the results it looks like it's pretty split up equally there um 31 percent has so welcome back to our master class um the majority though has not attended a webinar so i'm really happy you guys are joining us today yeah, I mean, I think it's a good first webinar if you're just getting started on Amazon and yeah. looking to launch your first product. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, and just so um, everyone's aware, this is sort of who this webinar is geared towards. So not if not just a new seller launching a product, but if you're looking to launch um, an additional product, relaunch a product, just kind of grow your inventory and product offering. Um, and, or if you are someone who just recently got brain registry and wants to know how to leverage that, um, this is a good webinar to be on as well. And if you're wondering what a relaunch is, we'll definitely touch upon that later in the webinar. So, um, you know, it's pretty interesting. We think it's just for those new products, but it's definitely for a wider variety of those sellers. Absolutely. And just to add, add to this comment regarding the intended audience, I think one thing that's very apparent for us working closely with Amazon and thousands of sellers is just the, the sort of the playbook is constantly changing. So if we think back to you know the last 12 months, the new ad units that have been pushed out on sponsored products, headline search, um, the different tactics, the fact that Amazon has um, put some restrictions in place for things like giveaways. These have all affected strategies for how, how to launch a product. So um, certainly we want to touch on some of those topics. We want to get some feedback from you guys as well. Um, and and really, I think this is just the spirit of being a successful Amazon seller is that this is fluid. Um, you know, there really is no such thing as an expert because anyone who says that they're an expert, um, you know, in a way is is – needing to constantly be ahead of the curve and keep changing. Um, so that's just one of the great things that we're trying to achieve with this webinar. And you know, as a company, we want to share as much information as possible. So we hope you enjoy it. And um, yeah, let's get started. All right, awesome. So going right into our first section here, understanding and measuring the impact of advertising on your business. Kind of a mouthful, it's a long title, uh, but we'll break it down for you so you can see exactly how to measure ad performance and how it relates to your Amazon business overall. And the concept of your advertising spend feeding into your overall business um, is what we call the flywheel effect here. So essentially any ad decisions you make have an impact on your organic sales and your overall sales as well. So this is our flywheel here, and we're going to break it down in more detail for you um, going into each section, but it's basically Running advertising gives you increased exposure, which gives you more sales, which gives you higher rank, which is going to boost your overall business as well. 
Yeah, and just to you know reiterate the, the flywheel effect here, it's actually providing this foundation for any product launch. Um, this is actually really a key strategy, and that we're gonna basically talk about this throughout the webinar. So really just wanna help you guys you know understand that importance there. Exactly. So like Megan just said, it's uh, the goal is to understand um, how sponsored products is influencing your business and how you can use advertising sort of as a jump start to your business. Um, the model that Amazon has with SP is kind of pay to play. So you sort of have to invest in advertising if you want to get the better placements and higher placements that you wouldn't organically as a new seller or for a new product without a history of sales or ratings or reviews. Absolutely. And just to, um, you know, I think I think it'd be good for the audience to sort of talk about, um, you know, the, the ideal idea of a flywheel in the sense that um, what we're looking to do is to help sellers build momentum. Um, and, and really the question that every seller is, is wanting to know is in the launch phase, what are the best tactics? What are the best tools? How much advertising? All of those things. What are the, the right, what's the right formula to get the flywheel moving? But once you start to get momentum, of course, what you're looking to do as an entrepreneur is to have the business run on its own. And that's the concept of the flywheel. And of course, when, when it's running on its own, you're going to have momentum in terms of sales rank, um, perhaps repeat purchasing, and then this would all relate to much more profitability in the in the long run. And I'm sure everyone on the call is is an Amazon buyer of of some sort as a consumer. You know, we all know about the top rank products, right? That's the holy grail to get to. You know, the the top ranking. We're going to talk about some success stories later in the webinar. The question is, how do you get the formula right to eventually get into that position. I guess another part to it would, would also be that we'll touch on today is once you're at the top ranking position, you know, what do you need to do to maintain that? Um, but this is all about the idea of, you know, rolling down the hill and speeding up and being able to do things much more efficiently over time. Um, you know, like anything uh, in, in, in certainly in entrepreneurship, it's, it's tough to get going in the beginning. But once you start to get the, uh, the the momentum, things start to get very exciting. Exactly. And the flywheel is something that's coming up um, from Amazon's perspective as well. And we have um, this little quote up here about prime customers um, who come to the site are the ones who we can help select items and use advertising to help them make decisions and be more informed. So it's basically a way for you to put yourself um, at the top of results, but then also place yourself in front of prime shoppers who tend to be repeat shoppers and shop more frequently on Amazon. Yeah, and, and this is a flywheel in a more general sense that Amazon is looking at where they're looking to obviously, you know, drive um, that velocity for sellers, but also drive efficiency, which we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, they're definitely aligned in that strategy um, in a bigger sense. Yeah, and I mean, if you think about, you know, where Amazon sits today, you know, it, it by by far is 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 the most attractive, high highest traffic shop in the world. So if you think about the upside uh, for a product to get really well ranked and for that to get picked up, um, it's almost like the sort of you know if you think about um, uh, you know markets like uh, New York Times bestseller list. Like once you make it onto that list. You know, then you're going to, you know, become a, a New York Times best-selling author. Then it's the next one. Then it's the next one. So I think everyone on the call, and really what we we've been helping thousands of sellers with is, how do you get into that position to be one of the top-ranked products? And and once you're there, how do you maintain that status um, and and make it sustainable? I think sustainability is really important, right? And this is what this this quote is talking about: the fact that Prime subscribers come back over and over again. Um, you know, the, the, the Amazon um, analysts talk about, you know, how sticky Amazon is. You know, it's, it's a public stock. It's, it recently surpassed um, Google as um, the second most valuable company in, in the United States um, behind Apple, I think. So it's this idea that, you know, the once you get into that position, you know, maintaining that volume and, and, and really being in, in the special area that's going to constantly keep keep flowing and keep keep the momentum going 
Yep. Um, so this brings us into our next poll of the day. So before we give you advice on launching new products and what strategies to use, we'd like to hear from you about what you've tried already um, and get an idea for that. And what we're asking here is to rank your most important strategy. So we'd like to hear from you guys. Pick the option that you use um, as, as your number one strategy for launching uh, a, a new product. And if you use a combination, we'd love to hear from you about what kind of combination that is. So definitely drop us a note on that. Um, and if there's anything that's not covered here, that's a strategy that you use, uh, please let us know about that as well. Yeah, it's interesting here. So nearly 50%, well, we're going to share the poll results. We can see them coming through. Yeah. Um, just actually a side note, these are completely anonymous. Um, you know, we don't share any of this data, of course. Um, so thank you so much for voting. And uh, the results are, are very, very interesting, actually. Let's close that poll. And it looks like the majority of you are advertising sponsored products. So that's really awesome. You're, you know, really contributing to the flywheel effect. Um, and then it also looks like the next largest segment of you out there is using a combination of the above. Well, let's yeah, let's just talk about that a second. So, yeah, thanks, Megan. I mean, these results are really interesting. So 43% sponsored products and giveaways and discounts at only 6%. And this is, I think, what I was talking about earlier in the, in the sense that the, the strategies have changed. Um, you know, I think if we did this poll, you know, 12 months ago, 18 months ago, uh, there, the 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 idea of giveaways and um, and tools um, that were allowing sellers to basically promote at a discount products for launch, and that was that was something that was acceptable. And Amazon sort of outlawed that. And now, of course, Amazon sponsored products is 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 much more of a playbook. So that's just really interesting data that we're seeing um, in these results. We also got some feedback. Uh, for other sellers using headline ads, so HSA, that's awesome. And then another seller out there has used Instagram ads, but not has been very effective for them. Okay, and that would be the 6% for advertising on social cha channels off mm -hmm. of Amazon, right? Yeah, but it doesn't seem like a lot of people are leading with that strategy. Um, it seems maybe supplemental. Absolutely. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and close okay, that. Thanks for poll. voting on that, guys. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, great. So this brings us into um, a discussion on the marketing funnel. So we've discussed this before in prior webinars for the 30 or so percent who've been on them before. Um, and it really is sort of to give you an idea for um, what stage your buyer or your customer is in um, as they discover your product and they make the decision to purchase it. So we're going to start right at the top with awareness. Um, that's where headline search ads sort of come into play. Um, and that's sort of where your product launch begins. And then next is consideration. So you're searching more specifically and then you're going through that paid advertising, also the organic placement there. And then we next trickle down to conversion. So they are aware of your brand, they are on your product page. Now that enhanced brand content captures that conversion there. Exactly. Um, so uh, what we're gonna do now is kind of come back to the idea of the flywheel and we're gonna break it down uh, part by part for you. So as Alistair mentioned, the idea is you know, getting it started is gonna be the hardest part, but once you have it off the ground, it's gonna keep rolling and snowballing for you um, and allow you to grow your business overall. So as far as getting increased exposure, um, this is gonna be the first part um, that you need to solve for. So you have to get your product in front of people to get them interested in buying it. Um, and gaining that initial visibility can be really challenging for a new product on Amazon. And that's really where sponsored products can help you gain additional exposure. And let's let's talk about that, Gary. So yeah. just, just to be absolutely clear, of course, with sponsored products, the focus is keywords. So you can actually, yeah. um, in a way, guarantee placements very, very high up on the search results, even if your product hasn't got had any momentum whereas yeah. if you think about how the entire amazon um system is organized it, it it's a ranking based off um sales rank right like mm -hmm. in terms of conversion and the the algorithm that that drives amazon and i think similar to how you think about google right like if you, you know i'm sure everyone's very aware of you know when they're typing a google search they'll see the um adwords which are the sponsored results um, in the same way, sponsor products is very, very similar. 
you know, even if you don't have the number one um, page that, you know, Google's ranking you on a particular search term, you can now pay to get placement. So, so Gary, what, I mean, how, how should a new, let's say I'm starting a, a product launch next week. Mm -hmm. Is it a fair statement to say I can guarantee being at the top of, of searches here in Amazon, like, you know, the world's most um, used product search engine? I mean, what does sponsored products do in terms of results? I mean, let's say you and I start a product yeah. and, you know, does that mean that we can bid on any particular keyword? You can bid on any keyword and you can offer up any bid that you would like, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee top placement as in the top of the first page. But by bidding on a particular keyword, you can move your um, ad from, say, page seven organically to maybe page three with sponsored ads. So it's going to help you get exposure and show up better in results, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee top of the page, first page placement because you don't have that history of sales yet. But with this increased exposure, you should start the ball rolling, get more sales, get more conversion, and move yourself up um, in the search results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amazon is really focused on relevancy and what's most likely to actually drive that order for that customer. So, you know, once they do, do detect that, that's where sponsor products really does take off and you can get better placement. And again, that's very similar to Google AdWords. Um, just quickly on that, for, for those of you who are thinking about Google AdWords, as an analogy, Google has a, a similar relevancy score and a quality score of their, their results. So in a way, um, what Google and Amazon are protecting themselves against is very, very non-relevant products or very, very non-relevant searches and results. Yeah, because so, Amazon is still coming in customer first here, so they want to make sure that people who are on their website shopping and searching are finding not just products that have paid to be um, in the best spot, but ones that are relevant to their searches as well. Yeah. Um, and we have an interesting question coming in from Curtis, um, who wants to know, is it advisable to wait until the product has some reviews before beginning sponsored ads? Or should you go ahead and get sponsored ads going? That's a great question. Months? Yeah, so we've actually gotten this, this is actually a pretty common question from sellers. and. It's definitely advisable to, you know, start off that process just because you will be getting reviews eventually. Uh, we'll definitely cover that later in the webinar. But a key feature here is going to be that that reach out, the, the email order follow up. That's really going to help drive those reviews um, just as like a new product, for example. So yeah, that's definitely a key strategy. I think I think it's. Um... I mean, we've studied some of this and, it, and it's really interesting. You know, if you've got no reviews whatsoever it's going to have a really, really negative impact. So, um, I mean, the simple answer back to Curtis, and thank you for, for asking this, is absolutely you, you want some social proof, you want some validity um, that, that this is a you know, really, really um, excellent product. So um, now the real question is how many reviews do you, do you actually need? Um, you know, certainly what we've seen is no reviews is, is a real problem. Um, and, you know, there's a sort of a threshold, you know, between sort of 20 to 50 reviews is going to create um, enough validity that this is, uh, you know, a fantastic product. And, and, and then that will allow your sponsor products to um, convert higher. And then you get that, um, as, as we we're talking about here, the flywheel effect uh, into play. So um, absolutely, reviews are critical. There's a, a number of different tools out there in the market that can be used to solicit positive feedback. Um, and of course, providing an amazing product is, is, is obviously the most important part to doing that. Yeah, um, and some of the metrics you wanna look at during this phase are gonna be um, your impressions and clicks for your sponsored products ads, and then your sessions and page views for your overall business. A lot of people come in sort of a cost first, and that's the first metric on their mind. But it's important to remember, depending on which phase you're in with your product launch, there are other metrics that are going to be measures of your success rather than just a cost. Yeah. And we're actually going to show you where you can find these metrics um, in a couple slides, so you can be more data driven with um, each approach of the flywheel. All right. Perfect. So this brings us into the next section of the flywheel, which is more sales. So with more sales, um, this really comes from that widened opportunity of that um, increased visibility, um, just because your paid ad is definitely going to get that higher placement in relation to your organic. And you're going to be focusing on a couple of metrics here. 
um, in this part of the flywheel where it's going to be really just conversion. Um, if they're being driven from you know paid advertising to your page, but they're not converting, that's going to be a huge note, and Amazon's going to take notice there. Perfect. And the next section that we come into, um, you know, once you have your conversion rate going, it's going to feed into more sales and higher sales volume is going to impact your sales rank as well. And Amazon notes a sale is a sale, whether it's from organic or paid advertising. Mm -hmm. So it really just all factors into your overall business reports there. So that's a really important point, Megan. So let, let's clarify that. So um, you're saying that uh, sponsor product sale is considered a conversion event, which will in, in fact boost performance of the overall piece. Yeah, so that, I mean, that just shows you how important that head start is with respect to sponsor products, right? And I think that's why we're seeing, you know, the results of the webinar, 50% of people roughly are, are seeing, you know, sponsor products as a key part because what you're looking to do very, very early on is get any form of conversion possible. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sponsored products is, of course, going to give you a lot less traffic, but it's going to give you search-driven traffic that, yep. that sh should convert. So that's a really important point that um, the conversion from sponsored products, are, are, you know, they, 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 they'll start to accumulate and then start to um, accelerate that organic uh, sales rank as well. Yeah, and at this point, you know, as you're driving paid ads, you're actually going to be seeing <coughs> a growth in organic. So they're all all sales velocity from both sides are definitely feeding in. But just think about if you didn't start sponsored products. Your um, your new product, for example, is on page 12. It may never get the the eyes it needs. So I think sponsored products is super critical to these. Yeah, and that's a authors. question we encounter pretty frequently, yeah. right? What, Should, wouldn't I, I have gotten these same results if I wasn't running ads? Yeah. Do I have to run advertising yeah. to be in this position? It could definitely slow down your product launch for sure. Yeah. This just really escalates it with that flywheel. But fact. I mean, if you're back in page 12, um, and this is sort of aligned with how powerful Amazon is, I mean, people trust the Amazon search engine. Um, so you know, I guess the the opposite you know, the flip side is why would anyone ever buy anything on, on the on the 12th yeah. page of Amazon with no reviews? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I think, um, and again, this is just an evolution. You know, sponsor products was, was not really a factor, you know, a couple of years ago. Um, and, and I think it's, you know, and, and I think some of the, uh, the audience have actually um, talked about headline search as well. So I know that we're going to discuss that in, in detail too. So that's yet another way. Um, to to really get into well up there right below the search search bar. Um, yeah. So we'll definitely cover that in in a, a few more slides time. And especially as people are focusing more on mobile, that's more and more important just because they'll be scrolling through on their phones there. Yep, I know I've spent many of us rides scrolling through Amazon <laughs> and ordering a lot of unnecessary so, items. No, that's a, that's, a, that's a good point. So. Would you say then, Gary, the effect of sponsored products is amplified on mobile? I mean, it, it, I it's certainly the, 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 yeah. the user experience on mobile. I think is, on mobile, it's even harder to distinguish an ad from an organic placement. Right. I mean, Amazon's trying to make it as subtle yeah. as possible. And I feel like on mobile, they do an even better job of sort of masking what's an ad and what isn't. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. I, I definitely, when I'm shopping on you know Amazon's app, I'm looking at like probably the first 10 right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to do a couple of flips of my, flicks of my wrist, and those are all the results yeah. that I'm going to see. I don't know that I'm going to. But do you, I mean, or... obviously, you, you, you know, we work with sellers all the time and yeah. helping them with sponsored products. I mean, how do you think of uh, a new product with, with um, let's say, no rankings that's sponsored? I mean, do, do you, do you, do you, maybe we, we're biased because we have such a good understanding of, of the data yeah, in the background, yeah. but do you look at those ads and say, well, this might not be a great product. They might be just paying to be at the front. Or do you trust that there's this relationship between the sponsored ads and the rankings? And I mean, it's interesting. Yeah. What do you think? I would probably never have explored that product at all. If it, even if it hadn't, you know, has no reviews and it's placed there, I'm still probably going to click into it and take a look at that product, which mm -hmm. I would never even have considered it probably if it was on a different page mm -hmm. and not paid to be. Um, so you're so similar to, let's say, Google, um, you know, especially if you're looking for something in particular, you're you're willing to click 
the sponsor products, even though you yeah. know it didn't get there organically, you know that the seller is or the brand is is paying. Yeah. Yeah. I also well, like to focus Megan? on the product details. If they have lifestyle images, enhanced brand content, um, you know, priced pretty well against the competition. I think being able to, you know, be able to envision myself with the product really helps too. Yeah, I mean, I I think I share the same opinion as you guys, but I think we talked a little bit about reviews earlier. Yeah. And I think, um, in some of the data that we've seen, and certainly from my personal experience, if I see a sponsored product ad and I see positive reviews, I I put those reviews under a sort of a, 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 a sort of a more detailed microscope in my eyes. Like I'm yeah. actually going to read those reviews, and this relates to some of the other changes in the Amazon ecosystem. I'm going to be looking for reviews that weren't solicited by a review club, and you know that was a big problem a year ago because um, when you were doing a product launch, you could um, you know get a whole load of orders, and then you would see. In the reviews, there was that sort of disclaimer text. Do you remember that? The yeah, sentence yeah. that says, you know, this has been, this I bought this because I left a fair review, and 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 I'm really really happy that Amazon's taken that away because that just kind of distorted everything. So, yeah. what I'm saying is, I think when I, I, I I'm definitely willing to look at a sponsor product ad, but I'm gonna really inspect the reviews more, and if I see great honest reviews that I trust the Amazon system with, yeah. I mean, think about that. A year ago, when there were so many of these, you know, fake reviews. I mean, it's kind of like the topic of, 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 of the, you know, the, the world right now. It's like fake news, right? Like, yeah. it's such a problem. So I think if Amazon can create more and more trust in the reviews, it gives you the chance to trust the advertising more. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's something that we've been seeing. So back to you know, Curtis's question was around reviews i mean i think if you're using sponsor products it's really really important actually ray's jumped in um hello ray um and ray's actually just noted that there's a, a website called fakespot.com and uh, what ray's noted here is for many of the amazon purchases you can actually um identify uh, legitimate saying. reviews oh. so that's a really good uh note we should oh. actually repost that in the uh in the chat to yeah. share with everyone so that's, a, that's a really good point share that with the audience here pickspot.com yeah so it'll be just in the chat box guys if you want to take a look at that link yeah thanks for sharing that ray i really appreciate that So now diving into um, more specifically where you can find some of these metrics um, I know in the past on webinars, we've really talked about, you know, looking at your business reports, looking at your um, full operations reports here, and actually combining the two is extremely powerful. Um, and we're actually going to talk about how this relates to the file fact, but where you can find your business reports is under the reports drop down, and you want to look at the child by child season. And what this is going to help you do is look at um, your conversion rate, your sessions, how how much visibility is that new product getting? And you have to track that product launch there. So just to clarify, these are two different reports mm -hmm. that are found within Seller Central. Yep. One is we're recommending take a look at the advertised product report, which is from the sponsored products data, right? Yeah. Correct. Sorry, not the bulk operations. My fault. Um, this okay. is part of the new um, advertising that they released with that ROAS met metric, which yeah. is return on ad spend okay so look at that and then also pull the report around which is the overall business report section of seller central yeah. and here we've got labeled session percentage so that's going to tell you um what's the session percentage going to tell you megan so if you're able to pair that with um also the units order there you can actually find your conversion rate Right. Okay. So that's going to tell you your conversion rate for particular ASINs, your page views percentage, and obviously your units ordered and the order of product sales. Yeah. And you're looking to see the relationship between these two, one specific to advertising and one's the overall business. And that becomes the, the sort of the calculation as you start to see the why we're building up the overall performance of the business is going to increase, but initially you're going to see a lot of action in the sponsor products. Yeah. Report. And what you want to be measuring is your organic growth as well. Um, not just that overall. So that's where you can actually pair the two together um, and look at that difference, which 
actually brings us to this growth trend mm -hmm. that you will typically see with <coughs> product launches. Yep, and then we have the trend line for ACOS there. What normally happens is it'll come down for a while and then it'll start to plateau. Um, but usually even at that plateau, you should be getting more overall sales. Um, so it's important to look at not just ACOS in, the, in terms of ad revenue, but in terms of overall revenue as well. I think this is a great illustration. You know, what, what we're looking at here for success is the fact that the gap between ad revenue and organic revenue is widening over time. Mm -hmm. And as you're widening over time, your business is generating organic revenue a lot more efficiently, obviously, because you're not paying for the cost of advertising and then you're getting momentum, you're getting the reviews going. So, you know, starting out the two lines will, um, in fact, potentially have ad revenue um, be much higher. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're at, at the, you know, the day one, you, you might be just only generating orders from, from uh, ad spend, yeah. sponsor products spend. And then over time, you're going to see the organic revenue grow. And and just this graph right here, I mean, we have um, been putting a tremendous amount of data science re research and econometrics research into this. Um, and this is the relationship that we're really obsessed about, right? Because, you know, I think this question, this graph shows the question that every seller is trying to figure out, figure out at what point does my ad revenue start to become less relevant to my organic revenue. But it, it's an interesting mathematical problem because, you know, of course the axis on the bottom is time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but we've we've been studying this. We've actually, you know, um, for, for a lot of the audience probably, um, you know, you guys know about our platform Sponsor Products Optimizer. And, and in terms of our algorithms within that software, what the software is doing is optimizing around, um, the highest performance to get the most out of your advertising spend on sponsor products. So it's just a really, really important thought process here of, you know, the gap between organic and, and advertising revenue over time. And, and I think it's also important to note that um, you need to be looking at sponsor products, not just in this bubble, but how it impacts your overall business. I think that's a really good takeaway from that slide, just because some people aren't looking at that bigger picture, but that advertising it really does build up that bigger picture for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and these are the other factors that can sort of go into the flywheel as well. So it can be your pricing, it can be um, what kind of margins you're working with, your profitability, sales rank and volume, your return on ad spend, which is the metric that we mentioned earlier. Um, and we had a question um, from Doug about, you know, if you're new to Amazon, how do you start with the maximum number of reviews? And that's sort of the problem that a lot of sellers are trying to solve is how to I launched this product when I don't have reviews because they kind of feed into each other. So some of these other factors might be something that you play with. So you could try pricing discounts. You could try giveaways um, and try to build up your presence that way. Yeah, I've seen a lot of success actually with promotions, not just on singular items, but really gearing customers towards that velocity that mm -hmm. you're looking to. So buy one, get one. Um, I know that's been really beneficial in product launches. So pretty yeah, interesting. I think, I mean, I, I know the promotions and we, you know, we've already talked about yeah. the review clubs um, and the quality of reviews. I mean, I think over time, um, the ecosystem, the Amazon algorithm itself is going to become a lot more sophisticated and consumers are going to becoming more sophisticated to be able to tell ultimately, mm -hmm. you know, whether reviews are fake or not. And I know yeah. that's an interesting concept, right? The idea that Amazon buyers are becoming more intelligent, but it's absolutely true. I mean, I, I certainly start, you know, we buy on Amazon so much now, you can sort of tell, right? Like, if yeah. you know, you, you know, it's almost like this modern thinking of like, we can tell if like Instagram posts are doctored or not. Yeah. It's like the same type of thing that we're talking about here with Amazon reviews. And so I think it's really important for entrepreneurs to think about, um, there is, you know, obviously there's optimization, there's these factors that we're talking about on screen, but at the end of the day, what's going to win in the long run is honesty and really, really high quality intellectual property. And what I mean by that is, is producing really, really good products. Yeah. You're never going to be successful in, in the long run by, you know, giving products away in just to get reviews because, you know, the, the, the long run effects of the market, which, you know, the consumers are part of that, you know, they're the demand and, and your competition will be able to kind of 
push you out. So yeah, I think if you are going to use promotions or giveaways as a way to get reviews, you need to have your product kind of be as high quality as you can yep. make it with the feedback at the time, because you have to be open to all sorts of feedback and the strongest product offering that you can make. Yeah. the better the strategy is going to work for you. And I think it's all about building trust with the customer. Because yeah. they come to Amazon because they trust it. So they want to be able to trust your yeah, product and, as and well. I think we've talked about reviews, but there's also the, the Q&A section on Amazon, yeah. which is also very, very important. And you know, adding more ways for the brands to connect. And I think Amazon, you know, we work with Amazon very closely. You know, we, we know in a way what they're working on, and they're going to give more and more opportunity for, for legitimate brands to tell a story. Yep. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, how to position yourself offline of Amazon as well. Um, but I think I think just in a way, being very, very patient. I mean, there's a ton of services out there that claim to, you know, help sellers just launch a new brand and become an Amazon millionaire in, you know, six months. Um, and I think that's just unrealistic relative to the competition, right? Like what What's going to be really successful is, you know, really, really good products that that actually create a difference um and you know the reviews the reviews show that yeah i mean you, you, there's no sort of ultimate quick quick way to you know get rich um through this and i think um you know that that's where we would encourage sellers who who are really committed to building real brands to be very very devoted to um to the consumers, right? Um, actually, there's one we, we were discussing this earlier. There's we we're talking about the Instapot, right? Yeah. The Instapot, oh, yeah. in which I have one of those, and um, I'll see if I can dig up the article and post it right now. But basically, the article is like there are 39,000 reviews, and the guy that invented Instapot claims to have read every one of them. And and it and I and I think it's I think it's that type of commitment where you really really care about what you're producing. I think I feel. I feel good saying this, that that's what really matters, right? Like, you know, don't sell bad products yeah. and try and trick people with giveaways to try and be successful on Amazon because it won't work in the long run. Yeah, and I feel like it becomes evident pretty quickly um, if that's the case because people would leave reviews and are probably more likely to read yeah. leave reviews for a bad experience. Yeah. yeah, and when we have so much data here on, you know, Amazon sellers and, you know, what, what is – successful and, and we, we, we you know at Take Metrics we are able to see such an interesting cross section of the market and um, you know everything I'm saying just proves out right because we see thousands of sellers we can tell which sellers are sustainable. Um, so let me dig up that article while you guys are talking and I'll post okay. that so I'd like to share. Um, so while Alistair looks at that article we'd like to go into the next section. Um, so this chart will look familiar if we were on our last sponsored products masterclass yeah. around ACOS specifically. In probably the last, all of them of 2018, we've <laughs> probably shown this chart now. Yeah, uh, but today we wanted to focus just on the launch section of it and show you sort of what your willingness to spend on advertising should be uh, based on your product being in the launch phase. So based on what your margins are, this is sort of where you can expect your ACOS to land, and this is how much you might need to invest to get your product off the ground with sponsored products initially. And a good way to think about this chart is your margins are actually your baselines of setting these. And you, if you're looking to really invest in launching your brand or even your product, you need a pay to play. So being able to go above that margin, mm -hmm. um, of course, that's not sustainable in the long run, as we've talked about with profitability. So this is only going to be for a certain period of time where you really want to be focusing on this higher target with advertising. Yep, and we'll go more into the timeline in just a second, but uh, we wanted to get another poll up there about how long you run your sponsored products ads for a product. And I'm also going to share with everyone um, a link to that ECUS target chart so you can set that for your product launches. Yep, so I'll launch that poll as well. Perfect. Great. And if there's anything, um, as I mentioned earlier, that this list doesn't cover, we'd love to hear from you um, and tell us, you know, what else you might be doing uh, for sponsored products. And while the poll is up, uh, Morris has a question about gross margin range of campaigns. So your gross margin, Morris, is going to be your margin minus your advertising spend. So keeping that in mind, the um, ACOS target column will essentially tell you how much you can expect to spend on advertising during that launch phase. All right, awesome. Thank you for everyone participating um, in this poll. I'm going to leave it open for a couple more seconds there. 
let everyone vote. All right, I'm going to share the results with you. And it looks like the majority um, of viewers are actually letting advertising run for the length of the product. That's very interesting. Amazon. But then we've also got um, we've got 11% of the audience not running any sponsored products ads, and then we've got 8% um, only running them for a set amount of time. So mm -hmm. that's combine that, and that's nearly tw nearly 20%, nearly a fifth of the audience who are not running sponsored products. Continuously, that's consistent with you know the data that we see, and you know we see this. We, again, I, I've mentioned that we do a lot of data science work, and we've worked closely with Amazon. And um, you know, I, I bet that twenty percent is thinking to themselves, you know, why give Amazon more money, right? Mm -hmm. Like, why invest more when you know this feels like I'm just paying for FBA fees, I'm yeah, paying for yeah. the Amazon commission. Why would I spend more on? On sponsored products, and that and that is a you know very very interesting point of view, and obviously a totally legitimate one. Um, you know the 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 relationships that we found really quite frankly indicate that it works. Um, in a way, Amazon is has a huge interest in making it work, right? Like they're, they're wanting to monetize this. So one of the challenges that um, sellers uh, sort of an, are now facing is well if, if my competition is running sponsored products yeah. and, and if I'm not then I'm getting the sort of the, the, the slowing down of my flywheel while my competitors yeah, and, and yeah. then it's and it's just really interesting from a, um, an economic standpoint because it's this sort of concept of game theory like an arms race of like and you know obviously we've seen this with Google and Facebook and, and Amazon's doing it too I mean all this means is that you know to to have a successful product strategy, you know you will need to advertise. I mean, what what do you guys think about that though? I mean, in a way, you know, if what I'm saying is accurate, does that mean that everyone is going to have to pay Amazon more money to be successful? Like, you know, if there's an yeah. upside, like Megan, if you're selling and I'm selling, yeah. and you're not wanting to advertise, and I want to advertise, I'm gonna obviously get a, you know a leg up on you yeah I think um, what's huge about if you are advertising versus not is having that real estate I think being at the top is so critical especially for paid advertising your competitor is going to be bidding on that um, particular search term for example or that keyword I mean so I mean just having that placement up there or maybe that sale is going to go to your to, to you instead of me but what will happen, I mean, will it be similar to FBA? I mean, I remember starting, I mean, being one of the early Amazon sellers back in 2003 now. So, um, and I remember being one of the first sellers. I mean, I remember talking about FBA as a pretty new concept. Um, and then now we see sort of 90% penetration of, you know, you have to be an FBA, so you have to be attractive to Amazon Prime. What do you think? I mean, is it going to be the same for sponsored products? Like you have to, you have to do it. I mean, the 20% of people here who are listening that either don't run sponsored products ads or run them for a certain period of time, you know, what, you know, do, do they have to be successful? Is it a requirement in the future? I mean, what, what do we think? I think the way things are right now, it is sort of a requirement. You kind of have to pay to play. Um, but I think down the road, there might be other avenues that you could leverage more to boost your Amazon business. Because historically, Amazon hasn't really encouraged driving traffic from off Amazon onto um, the site. But I think that might be a direction that they head in. And until that happens, kind of sponsored products are your marketing channel on Amazon to yeah. get your brand out there. Even headline search ads, I mean, that's even above sponsored products if you think about it. So just even being able to have that um, intellectual property, the trademark um, brand registry, that's going to be huge. Yeah, the brands. I mean, I think, I, I mean, I think in... Um, I mean, the, the studies that we've done on this and the predictions that we're making, you know, using um, sort of real, uh, you know, econometrics modeling is that, you know, ultimately there's a huge cost to not advertising because Amazon has set this infrastructure yeah. up, right? This is the way that the ecosystem works. So um, I think I think, I think what, what this means here is that um, – it's just so important as an entrepreneur to think about product differentiation, right? Like, you know, if it's super competitive, you know, what, you know, where's your edge? Yeah. And it's just, just, you know, like hyper competitive market, very, very transparent, really, really good for consumers. Um, but for sellers, it's, it's all about, you know, 
trying to create something that's different. And, and I mean, the, the, the tough reality is, is that sponsored products are an avatar. Amazon advertising is since, since it's now a way to get an advantage, it means that it, you have to go down that road. Right. Yeah. And, th and that's where we have a responsibility to help our sellers. And this, I mean, ultimately that's why we started our company and why we we've, we've designed this amazing software to help optimize. Um, but you know, what we can't do is, produce an amazing product. So I think it's the entrepreneurs that are going to invent things like the Instapot um, yeah. that are going to be successful or bring products that have true IP over. Um, and it is survival of the fittest. It's, you know, it's a question of um, really you know, combining is. that with optimization technology. It really is. And it's also, I mean, a huge factor is going to be profitability. Like, can you do this profitably? That's a good, like, really you can good literally point. drive your business into the ground trying to really one up other sellers. Um, you know, if we were both sellers trying to bid up to yeah. page one spot. Well, I love this discussion. So really good point on profitability. I mean, does that mean, I mean, I guess the holy grail is to maintain product pricing higher yeah. through differentiation. Yeah, I think once you have make the initial investment from sponsored products, then you have the opportunity to maybe test a higher price and try to eke out more margins and spend less on advertising. And that's sort of the ideal path for you to follow is give that initial discount and get yeah. more sales velocity and then test up a little bit more. Which actually brings us right to our timeline of a product launch. That's a good Perfect. segue. Awesome. Um, great. So Megan, you want to lead us through the phases of the yeah. product launch? So many people think about a product launch of just during the product launch, but there's actually a lot of prep work that goes in before this initial launch, before it's ready, um, you know, on Amazon to um, those consumers. And that's actually going to be, um, like Alistair mentioned, developing IP, getting brand registry, having that trademark, especially if you are a brand and you are trying to differentiate your product. Mm -hmm. I think that's just, I mean, a really huge tip right there. Um, you want to have that in place because you can really take advantage of headline search ads, EBC, uh, which is enhanced brand content. And another huge factor is optimization for your product pages. Not only is this going to help drive sponsored products with the flywheel, but it's also going to help convert that traffic that you're paying for. Because yeah. if you have really bad content, no one's going to convert. And that's actually going to negatively impact your sales rate. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think it's just attention to detail and just quality, right? So we're talking yeah. quality of the goods itself. Obviously, that's what you're providing in the market to consumers. Mm -hmm. But Megan, your point's really, really good around the quality of product pages. So we've had we have successful brands that have actually paid copywriters mm -hmm. to write the content. Yeah. Um, photography is absolutely huge. Lifestyle images. Lifestyle images, yeah. enhanced brand content that you've already mentioned, and just taking real care of you know the details. And and I think it's again, I'm sort of leaning away from these concepts of um, you know, let's just throw up a, a, um, a private label product and let's, um, you know, give away a thousand units for dirt cheap and just get product reviews. I mean, it, it, the, the, the game has changed significantly mm -hmm. where quality really does matter. So I think everything from the, the naming of your brand, the, you know, the details in your photography, you know, those yeah, are all like things. categories that you're selling in because there are definitely categories that are way greater and yeah. way more saturated than the others. So part of the way um, you can overcome that is to have a differentiated product. So um, the next section is going to be about how you can identify when your product is actually out of the launch phase. So um, the main metric to look at in that case is going to be the proportion of your revenue stream and how much of that is coming from advertising versus how much of that is coming from um, organic overall sales. Yeah, so this is actually going to be a more data-driven approach rather than kind of having that gut instinct, or, you know, like X amount of months into that product launch. And what you want to be looking for is looking at your um, advertising sales and your overall sales to really identify when organic is starting to take off. And you want to be looking for when organic is actually surpassing your paid advertising. That's going to give you that indicator that you know, you are ready to, you know, like tone it down the spending, yeah. adjust those ACUS targets. Right. So they can make, take it more into the growth phase yep. of that chart that we share. Um, and then there are some instances where you maybe can't make it out of that phase and you need a few troubleshoots to get you out of the launch phase um, and get into the next section. 
Um, and a lot of these are factors that we've already discussed, but they could be make product development and making changes to um, the product you're putting out there, ingesting some of that feedback. And that, that'll be through reviews, yep. um, you know, comments from the sellers, or sorry, from the, the customers there. Um, use that feedback loop. I think that's going to be really huge in really those initial couple months mm -hmm. of that product launch. So what, I mean, I think what's really important in this discussion is the time frame. So, yeah. you know, that, that graph obviously looks fantastic. The idea that you can separate the um, performance of advertising revenue and start to get this separation with organic just taking off. Yeah how long does that typically take and you know this the troubleshooting that we're describing here i mean what 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 are the average times do you think i mean gary what's your experience um i think it's a matter of um, a few weeks for the most part um but sometimes it's also going to def uh, differ based on your category so mm -hmm. the flip side of being in a niche category is the search volume is just lower so it can take you longer to see data and to see returns and get out of that launch base just because fewer people are looking for that kind of product yeah, I've also found that, um, you know, some sellers are seeing that their product page content was impacting the product launch. They actually had to relaunch it at this point um, with this new content, with a new price that was um, really helping the demand there. Yeah, and that's you know, it's going to become evident pretty quickly to you. So if you see a huge number of impressions and clicks, but the conversion rate is just not keeping up, then that's telling you that there's a product listing page um, issue and that's something you should address and update. Yeah, and I think um, in terms of addressing the time frame, I mean, I, I mean your, your, your response was spot on, Gary. I think it really depends on category and even the brand. I mean, when we started the webinar, we talked about different audiences for the webinar, either you know, you're starting absolutely cold as a new entrepreneur trying to launch a product on Amazon, or if you're an established brand adding new SKUs. Um, I think, again, you know, understanding how savvy consumers are getting with the way that they browse on Amazon, I think there's just a lot of benefit to build, building momentum across different SKUs. For example, let's say you're um, women's apparel retailer, right? And you've got three different SKUs, two of which are top ranked. Being able to launch the next one um, creates this you know, ability for a consumer to, you know, to check out one of your other listings. Um, we're gonna see Amazon use more of their um, shops type homepage, which mm -hmm. is going to let people come back and, and see. So I think there's a lot of benefit to real brands that have a collection of different products. That's what we're seeing perform really well on headline search as well, because of course, headline search is an ad unit that you can display multiple products from the same brand. So um, I think it's the, the time frame really is going to depend on how much sort of real estate that you already have. But there's definitely a benefit to have an existing momentum on, on different SKUs, even though Amazon isn't set up like a typical shopping cart, right, or a typical um, store. You know, you would think that that wouldn't have much effect because each individual search is different. But, you, you know, it's very, very clear that consumers on Amazon are becoming much more sophisticated and, and really looking at more reviews and looking at reviews for your other products. Yeah. And I think that's just a really important fact. So the timing does matter. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense to, to think about that with your overall strategy. Um, and it looks like Alexander has a question about what demo means. Uh, we should have spelled that out. Yes, we do mean demographics. Uh -huh. um, so in the case of sponsored products, you, of course, can't target based on demographics. You can only target based on searches. Um, but this would mean changing the way you present your product on your page um, to highlight different features for different groups of people. Um, great. So um, before we wrap up here, let's talk about other channels and how you can leverage those. So there's two different ways you can actually leverage other channels. First, you can actually, you know, start your product launch on Amazon and supplement it with um, Instagram, Facebook, other advertising avenues. Or you could actually start your launch um, outside of Amazon on other channels, maybe you have your own website, and then actually, you know, launching it afterwards on Amazon there, driving that brand pre brand presence. Yeah, mm -hmm. for saturated categories, it can be a good strategy. Yeah. If you have less competition on, say, Instagram advertising or Facebook advertising, you could use that as a jumping off point and then drive more into Amazon. Um, we have several sellers who successfully utilized this strategy. So one of our sellers, Thursday Boots, has a great Amazon store page. 
they have a great website and then they have a strong Instagram presence as well. And they tell the same story across these different channels. So they retain their brand integrity, their brand vision, um, while still converting into sales. And these guys are amazing, right? So they built, uh, you know, an, a really, really high quality product. They've got amazing photography. They've really established themselves as, you know, someone who's making a difference in the market in a way, disrupting traditional, you know, boot companies like Timberland. And, you know, they've done that on Amazon, but we, we can also see that they've done that through, um, is, you know, on the right hand side, they've got a tremendous following. You can see that and it's pretty small, but there's about 13,000 views on one post on Instagram. And I think, I think this is, this is the future. The, the future is understanding that consumers are multi-platform, you know, buyers, right? They're, they're smart enough to figure out if they're going to spend, you know, um, X amount of dollars on a new pair of boots, they're going to start looking and say, well, that's a, you know, are these guys on Instagram? Are they on Facebook? I mean, let's look at their overall store. So very, very different evolution from just throwing a product on Amazon and, and having no other presence. And I think that's really, really interesting. Obviously Amazon has this sort of almost like a walled garden, this prime membership concept, but consumers don't think like that, right? They're, they're on other channels. And I think the brands that can talk to consumers and really tell stories outside of Amazon are going to be most successful. I also think it's really important to look at um, everything outside of trend, trend, uh, sorry, traditional marketing and this impact of influencers. I think that's really popped up over the years just because they can use social media paired with content and actually build trust that they already have. Yeah, I mean, this was another one of our success stories that we got up. I mean, we had a lot of fun over the Winter Olympics because we, you know, we, we helped Zipline Ski do an amazing job of their advertising on Amazon um, and, you know, to see their athletes and use these products on the Winter Olympics. It's an, it's an amazing entrepreneurial story, obviously a, a really, really high quality product, but to see them have legitimacy on their website, you know, um, endorsements from elite athletes, you know, it's really, really hard to replicate this brand. And, you know, this is this is the type of brand that's going to have longevity on Amazon and, and really start to build build the flywheel. We can see that in the data. Yeah, and I think the thing that both of these companies have in common is a differentiated product. Um, it's hard to replicate and it's hard to get into either of those um, types of products. It helps them stay above the competition and not lose track. Um, and then also incorporating reviews. So if people are giving you feedback, whether it's positive or negative, you need to use that to improve your product and improve how you're presenting that product. Yeah, well. it's part of the future of retail, right? The conversation that you have with your consumers, Amazon is just one of many channels. And, and Amazon reviews is a way to to talk to your your people buying your product. I mean, it, it's very exciting, and um, but but really care about those reviews. I mean, again, that, that article with the... Uh, the Instapot entrepreneur, I mean, really care about what people are writing. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you've sort of slipped through this funnel and launched your product, then you can start focusing more on retention and brand loyalty and people looking for you by name, people wanting to buy more um, offerings from your product catalog. Mm -hmm. um, great. So let's quickly wrap this up. Thank you for sticking with us, guys. So bringing it all together, you definitely want to be taking <laughs> sorry, <clears throat> advantage of the flywheel. So really utilizing paid advertising to kick off the momentum and then also use it throughout the life of the product, continue it, um, you know, just because it's becoming so competitive in the Amazon landscape. Next, um, take advantage of every part of the marketing funnel, whether it's um, conversion, maybe it's just brand awareness, um, really be aware of whether it's on page factors or even advertising there. Also use data to determine when your product launch is over. So really focusing on how that flywheel is uh, uh, impacting that sales rank or overall business. That'll really determine that phase and not just you know giving it a set amount of time. Mm -hmm. And then also um, like we, we saw with those two other brands, le leveraging other channels, using social media, your own um, dot .com. Perfect. Um, so I know we've had some questions coming in and keep those going. Uh, we wanna make sure you know how to find out about our SP product and yeah so um, well there's two things that we want to share so Megan if yeah. you could post the link so we have the most powerful platform uh, out there for sponsor products optimization you know we're really proud of this the amount of data that we've used and the amount of entrepreneurs that we've helped you know we've shown some of the brands that we uh, you know 
guys like Thursday Boots at Plain Ski rely on us to optimize their sponsor products and make sure that their flywheel is generating the highest profitability from sponsor products. So if you would like a demo of that, um, we're going to post the link and that's our, our product called SP Optimizer. So we're going to post that yep. link in the, the chat. Yep, it's in the chat. Um, and then we've also got the link for a new product that we're working on that's actually um, branded Takeometrics Flywheel. And what this is, is technology that is going to be very, very revolutionary in the Amazon space. Basically, the, the, the technology that we are working on and we will release to sellers is going to allow um, the optimization of sponsored products to map to the overall um, organic growth of, of the product. So when we showed that line of Amazon advertising spend starting to separate from organic spend, um, we're going to be able to help sellers identify that relationship and actually see profitability in a, an entirely different way. Really what we're doing here is we're answering that super important question that every seller on Amazon is trying to understand. What is the true profit from advertising? And you know, it's, it's around sponsored products. So um, I really want to thank everyone for, for taking the time to you know, be a part of uh, this webinar. Um, I'm going to drop also the link in here for sponsor products optimizer. So if you if you're running sponsor products today, and you'd like to get a demo of our solution for SP Optimizer, please do that. Um, if you sign up to the link for Flywheel, what that will do is um, put you on a, a path to learn about the technology that we're working on, and you'd be one of the first people to get access to the to the tool. Um, perfect. So uh, we have another webinar coming up in a few weeks. Here, we look forward to seeing you there. Um, it's going to be on April eighteenth. And thank you so much for joining us today, guys, and bearing with us through some of the audio yeah. issues. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you.